Hi everybody and welcome back to one of my videos. This time we're going to talk about one-to-one uh, uh, -one functions and onto functions. And these are really fundamental concepts in mathematics. So you will find them again if you study analysis, algebra, geometry, because many times mathematicians actually like to build functions which are at the same time one-to-one -one and onto between sets. So these functions are actually called uh, bijections or correspondence one-to-one, -one, and we will meet them at the end, at the very end of this video. So for now, let's introduce, let's uh, give the definition of one-to-one -one function and onto function first. So here I want just to recall our notation for a function. So remember that when I write f from a to b, so this automatically implies that I'm talking about a function and that in particular my domain is equal to a and my codomain is equal to b. And now you see, so far we use the notation with ordered pairs. And whenever, and actually in this video we're actually uh, using the equivalent notation of y equal f of x, okay? So you can always think that whenever I write y equal f of x, I am implicitly, implicitly saying that the order pair x, y belongs to f as a relation. Okay, so now we're get, we are really ready for, uh, to give the definition of one-to-one -one function. So definition. A function f from a to b is one to one or is an injection okay so these are the two words that you have to learn when we talk about uh, you know this first definition one to one and injection they mean the same thing so if for all x and y in A, so now X and Y, they, bo they both play the role of elements of my domain. So don't be confused by uh, the notation that we normally use, okay? So they are both elements of my domain. For all elements X and Y in A, if F of X is equal to F of Y, then X is equal to Y, okay? And actually, so you see that this definition is given as a conditional sentence. And so you know also that uh, a conditional sentence is equivalent to its contrapositive. So we can also say that uh, uh, f is one to one if for all x and y in A, if x is different from y. So this is the denial of uh, the consequent of the previous uh, conditional sentence implies that f of x is different from f of y, okay? So just to highlight this more, this is the contrapositive here. Okay, we're going to discuss more about this definition in the following slide, but for now, just let me say that whenever we have a function which is one-to-one, -one, okay, we can highlight this by writing on top of the uh, arrow, one-to-one. One. Now, what about a function which is on to be? So a function f from a to b is on to b, or also, again, even uh, also here we have another terminology for the same thing, or is a surjection. If, so this, um, this, this property is uh, easier to define because here we just require that the range of f is equal b. Recall that the range is always contained in b, but is not necessarily equal. So whenever they coincide, we say that the function is on to b. And in this case, we denote it this way. So f from a to b and we put onto 
on our arrow. So let's start from the definition of one-to-one -one that I just copy-paste here. So I think for understanding this definition, the second interpretation is, uh, uh, is easier to get the main idea behind this. Because we are basically saying that whenever we take two different inputs, so, so two elements of A, which are different, we require, in order for the function to be one-to-one, -one, we require that the corresponding images, f of x and f of y, they are also different. So uh, let me just, uh, here I uh, consider two examples. And... Uh, in the, one of these examples, sorry, one of these examples is one to one, while the other one is not one to one. So let's uh, consider first the red examples. So here you have that in whatever way consider two different elements. I don't know if I take one and two for instance, they are sent to different elements of B. One is sent to A, and two is different is sent to C and A is different from C. And you can check this uh, with, uh, by taking all the possible order pairs. Here is a very easy, and to see that they never will find a collision in some sense. Okay, so this example here, the first example is uh, uh, one to one. While the second example is not one to one, because in particular you see here, what happens uh, at D? Well, D is the arriving, uh, you know, uh, is, the, is basically the image of two different outputs of A. Indeed, two different arrows goes, uh, the two different arrows go to B. So here I have that one, sorry, F of one, sorry, let's say right like this, one, is different from three and f of one is equal to f of three, which is equal d. And so basically I am denying this second property. So this is uh, uh, what I want to say here is basically is that uh, uh, the property that uh, I am highlighting is normally used for disproving that a function is one-to-one, -one. while the first one, this is normally used for proving. In any case, you have to know both. Okay, so I put here two examples of real functions because Domain and codomains are uh, subsets of the set of real numbers. So one of these two functions is uh, one to one, while the other is not one to one. So now probably you don't have yet the intuition, so you will have to trust me. And in particular, here I want to prove that the first function is not one to one. So here I want to prove that f is not one to one. while I want to prove that this second function here is one-to-one. -one. Okay, so this proving that a function is one-to-one -one is kind of easy because I have to find two different inputs, so two different elements of my domain, which are sent to the same element of the codomain. And so here I want to highlight that we have x square and nothing else basically apart a constant and whenever you have x square remember that uh, the uh, the square of a, of opposite numbers is basically the same so here i'm expecting that uh, if i compute the image of two opposite number i will get the same thing and indeed i have f of negative 1 for instance okay i just need a counter example is equal to f of 1. So let, let me actually write that, that we have that 1 and negative 1, they are different uh, input such that 
f of 1 is equal to f of negative 1. If you compute this, you will get negative 2. Okay, so in the definition before, this is my x, this is my y, this is my f of x. So here I have f of x different from y and f of x equal to f of y, which is basically the de de denial of, so we are denying that the function is one to one. So now for the second example, we want to prove that the function is one to one. So we are going to use the definition that I'm going to recall here. You want that for all x, y in R, if f of x is equal to f of y, then x is equal to y. Okay, this is the definition. Here we have to prove a conditional sentence and this is our assumption. And this is our conclusion. So, let x and y in R such that, so we assume our assumption, f of x is equal to f of y. And then the next step is just to use the definition of our function. So here, use the definition of f, which says that x cubed plus 1 is equal y cubed plus 1. And now remember, keep in mind, we have to go into the direction of proving that x is equal to y. So first of all, I'm going to, re, uh, to subtract 1 both sides, and they get x cubed equal y cubed. And then, of course, here I can take both sides the cubic root, right? And I don't have any problem because I can take the cubic root of whatever uh, real number, positive, negative, zero, okay? And when I do this, of course, I get the, still my equality alls, so I get x equal to y. So I basically prove my conclusion, therefore, f is one to one. Now, we can also see this from a geometrical point of view. And uh, we already talked about the vertical test, so now we will uh, uh, discuss two horizontal line tests, one which works for one-to-one -one functions and the other one which, uh, which works uh, when you want to prove, or not prove, but when you want to have an intuition about uh, onto uh, functions. Okay, so this is what uh, uh, it says, this uh, uh, horizontal line test. So F is one to one. So here we have, you know, this is a real function. F is one to one. If and only if. Every... horizontal line intersects the graph of f at most once. So keep well in mind at most once. So we remember that we said that this function here is not one to one. Well, this one, it is one to one. So basically in the first case, so in the green case, we should be able to find an horizontal line that intersects my graph more than once, okay? So in, with reference to what we have done already, if I uh, draw here the line y equal negative two, so this is an horizontal line, I see that I get more than one intersection. And it did, this, this intersection have 
x coordinate equal to negative 1 and 1. And so this actually is telling me that f of 1, what we proved already, we showed already, is equal f of negative 1 and is equal to 2. Okay? So uh, whenever you can find an horizontal line that intersects your graph more than once, uh, you are sure that your function is not one-to-one. -one. But basically, this is not a proof, okay? You always have to prove it uh, formally by exhibiting two different I inputs that have the same output. In the second, uh, in the second example, uh, we are talking about a one-to-one -one function, and indeed here you could uh, draw whatever horizontal line. And you see that you will get at most, actually in this case, you will get always exactly one intersection, okay? And so this horizontal line test suggests us that this is actually a one-to-one -one function, and then the next step is to prove it like we did before. Okay, a question for you. Consider this function from the natural integers to the natural integers, which associates to every natural integer the double of it. So I want to, I'm asking here if this is an injection. So again, do not hesitate to stop the video uh, for thinking more and for proving or disproving it. And I will give uh, uh, the solution in five seconds. So, okay, let me, Consider here, I just uh, draw some uh, elements of our natural numbers. So we use the, uh, how to say, the, the convention that we start from one. So let's see what is doing this, uh, uh, this function. For instance, this function is sending one to its double, which is two. And then we're sending two into four, three, into 2 times 3, which is 6, 4 into 8, and so on. So basically, we are kind of considering 1 in the, in the, out, in the, in the range. We are kind of taking 1 out of 2 integers, okay? So the question is, is this an injection? And, uh, well, uh, our... Intuition says yes, because uh, we don't see any reason for having two different um, natural integers here that uh, have uh, two errors coming from two different natural integers, okay? So, but we have to prove it. So we want to prove that this is, yes, it is an injection. And so we want to prove here that for every, let me say, A and B in N, such that f of a f of a is equal to f of b. For proving that it is an injection, we have to prove that this implies that a is equal b. So from this we get from the definition of f that 2a is equal to 2b. And now we can divide by 2 without any problem. And so we get a equal b. And this proves that it is actually an injection. So even if you have uh, the good intuition, then you have to prove it. And what about this other function from z cross z to z, which sends the order pair x, y into x times y? Is this an injection or not? I will leave 10 seconds for thinking. Well, here, actually, the intuition say, hey, this set on the left here is kind of bigger than Z. Well, we are, we are talking here about sets which infinitely many uh, elements, so it's not really correct to talk about bigger set. But uh, anyway, this can tell us that uh, in the... Um, in the set z cross z, we have kind of more elements rather than z, and how, you know, probably there will be some collision when we consider this function. And this is actually the case, and the reason is actually that this, the product is commutative. So xy in particular here is equal to yx, 
Okay, so this means that uh, x, y, and y, x is actually sent to the same element. So let's just, uh, so here we want to answer that this is not an injection. And indeed, if you consider, just take an example, 1, 5, and 5, 1. These are two different order pairs because, because here uh, the order matter. And uh, we have that f one five is equal to one times five. This is also equal to five times one, okay, which is equal to five, and this is f of five one. So we found two different inputs which have the same output. So now, next, we're going to discuss about the um, the definition of onto functions, okay? So this definition, as I said, is quite easy. And uh, uh, is easy, at least is it is easy to describe because just we just require that uh, the range is equal to B. But I want to do some comments. So a remark that I kind of gave at the beginning. So here, since we always have, since we always have that the range of f is contained in b, by definition of the range, we have that f is onto b if and only if also, the other inclusion is true, right? If and only if B is contained in the range of F. Okay? So, it means that for every element in B, I can, uh, uh, that, that element is in the range. Okay? It has, to, if we want to translate this condition, we are saying that for every Y, or let me say actually, yes, for, for every y in B. Now I want to say that y is in the range. So there exists x in A such that f of x is equal y. And here I'm just saying, the second part here, I'm just saying that y is belongs to the range. Just check the definition. Okay, let me do an example of a function which is uh, surjective. So consider, for instance, um, A and B. As always, I will do very easy examples. So in A, I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, 4. And in B, I'm going to put A, B, C. And now I'm going to describe a function. So I'm saying just one goes to A, two goes also to A, three goes to B, and four goes to C. So here you see that computing the range is something very easy because I have just to list all the elements that are the landing point of one of my arrows. So here I have A, B, and C which is exactly equal to b. So this implies that f, the function f here, is on to b. But I want to show how to use the definition, even, the, even if this is a very, very easy example. So here, what we should prove is that for every element in b, so my elements here are a, b, and c, I can find an element in a whose image is actually uh, that element in B. So in this case, I can write that f of a, sorry, that a is equal f of 1. So here, as a remark, I could also say a is equal f of 2, but I just to need, I need at least one element in x, which is mapped to a. b is equal to f of 3, and c is equal to f of 4. Okay? So basically, 
I check that condition uh, for every element. I prove that every element in B is the image of an element in X, in A. Then, as I said, here A, I could also write F of 2, but uh, this would not change anything. This just says to us that this function is not injective. Okay, let's go back to the previous examples. Now, again, let's just uh, uh, use my intuition, let's say. And uh, we have an example here of an onto function and a function which is not onto, not surjective. So, specifically, uh, it's always, uh, this is always the bad guy, the first function. So, the first function is not onto. So, here we say that f. We want to prove that f is not onto. And here we want to prove actually that f in onto r, in this case, that f is onto r. So remember, here basically for every, let me write why not in r, you want to prove that there exists an x in r such that y not is equal f of x, okay? So while in the, in the above case, we want to prove the denial of this, right? So we want to prove that there exists y not in R such that, that for all x in R, y not is different from f of x, okay? So what is the key point here? The key point is always the square. The square is always greater or equal than zero, no? For every real number. So this implies that all this quantity will be greater or equal than negative three. Okay, so all our output will be greater or equal than negative three. So I will not have any output less than negative three, strictly less than negative three. So in particular, imagine that I consider y not to be negative 4. I could have also taken negative 5, negative 1,000, but let's just take an easy one. So, and this is, a, you know, when I say there exists a y not, it will be exactly this. And now I want to show that for all x, y not is different of f of x. So assume to the contrary, so I'm going to do by contradiction, assume to the contrary that there exists x in R such that negative force, which is my y naught, is equal to f of x. And now remember that f of x is equal x squared minus 3. And now by doing the computation very easy, I get x squared equal negative one. But so I get the contradiction because x squared is always greater or equal than zero and negative one is strictly less than zero. So this is a contradiction. So I cannot find any x whose image is negative four. And so my function is not onto R. Now I'm going to prove, uh, I'm going to show you how to prove that a function is onto by using uh, the definition, okay? So I have to, you see here, I have to take uh, an arbitrary real number in my codomain. So let y not belong to R, okay? And so now I want to show that for this specific y not, I can find uh, an element x in R whose image is y not. Okay, so I'm going, this is going to, to look a little bit magic, but then I will explain the trick. So here, set x equal to y not. The, the cubic root of y naught minus one, okay? So what do I have if I take x defined that way? Now, when I compute f of x, actually, let, let me go in another line. When I compute f of x, okay, I have to take the, the cubed 
So I have here this, and inside the argument of the cube, I have to put the cubic root of y naught minus one. And I would simplify, so I get y naught minus one plus one, which is equal to y naught. And here, the important fact is actually that I can define this x for every real number because this is not a square root, this is a cubic root. So it, it does not, I don't have any problem for negative numbers, for instance. So this is already always defined and the image of this particular x is exactly why not. So as I told you before, how is the trick for computing that x in function of y not? Well, basically here you are, you are solving, you see, if you look here, you are solving f of x equal y not, or in other words, you're solving x cubed plus one equal y not. And now you want to solve this with respect to x, so you get x cubed equal y naught minus one. And then again, you can take without any problem the cubic root both sides, so x equal the cubic root of y naught minus one. So this is the trick for uh, finding that quantity. Okay, also we have an horizontal line test when we talk about onto functions. So in this case, uh, this is how we, con we can state this horizontal line test. So f maps onto b if and only if for every y not in, in uh, for every real number y not the horizontal line y equal y not intersects the graph of f at least once. So before, remember, it was a most, now at least. Very different notion. So remember, in our example, this is not onto. And so because of this test, we basically can exhibit an horizontal line which does not have any intersection with our graph, and I can get inspiration from my graph, from my uh, previous uh, counterexample in some sense, when we considered y not to be equal to negative four, and you see that this line does not intersect the graph at any point. So this means that the function is not surjective. While in the second case, you, will, you can draw whatever horizontal line, and you will always get at least one intersection. So again, also in this case, it's the same function as before, we have always uh, at most, sorry, uh, uh, exactly one intersection for every horizontal line. And so that function is one to one. So a question for you. Again, the same function as before, now I'm asking if this is a surjection and I leave 10 seconds for thinking. Okay, so before uh, you saw that uh, actually that function, the, the, I, I don't have the same picture as before here, but basically that uh, uh, this function in the codomain is taking one element out of two. And for instance, uh, one, it seems that it was not the image of any element. So I'm going to prove here that this function is actually not a surjection because I can find an element, for instance, one, which is not in the range of f, okay? If I prove this, I'm basically saying that the range of f is different from n, okay? So in particular, I'm, I'm proving that this is strictly contained. Okay, so how to prove this? Again, by, you do this by contradiction. So assume to the contrary 
that one equal that uh, let's write there exists n in n such that f of n is equal one. Okay? But then you would get 2n equal 1. And now look, I can divide by two both sides. And what is here the contradiction? The contradiction is that this is a natural integer, while this is a rational in, um, number which is not in z. Okay, which is not an integer. So actually you can say that this is not in N to be actually, this is easier. So I found an element that should be at the same time in N and not in N, so this is a contradiction. And so in this case, in this way, I prove that one does not belong to the range of F. Okay, let's go to uh, the other question, which is exactly the same function as before and again, I'm asking here if uh, uh, this function is a surjection, and I leave 10 seconds. Okay, so again, uh, well, of course, this is not a justification, uh, but uh, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, here we have that Z is a, uh, kind of um, smaller set than Z cross B. So hopefully this is a surjection. And actually, uh, this is what we are going to prove. We're going to prove here that uh, we have to prove, remember, that the Z, it is contained in the range of F, okay? This is enough for proving that they are actually equal. So I have to show here that, uh, so basically here I have to show that for every A in Z, there exist now an order pair, so x, y in z cross b, z, such that f of x, y is equal to a. Okay? So basically, I want to, I'm saying, given an integer a, can I find two integers which product is a? Well, of course, yes, because, so let me write this. Well, so let A in Z, we have, if I consider one A, for instance, or A1, this is the easier that you can consider, you have for sure that the image of this, which is equal one times A, is equal A, okay? So you found um, an, an input in Z cross Z such that, the output is exactly equal to A, so you're, you, you prove that A is in the range of F. And so, again, Z is contained in the range of F. Or you can actually also, sorry, not like this, or you can actually here say that these are equal, it is equivalent. Okay, so this is a surjection. Okay, my question ends here, but I want just to give you the definition of uh, bijection. So let me take another color. So definition, because once you've defined what is a one-to-one -one function and what is a non-to function, defining a bijection is really trivial. So a function f from a to b, is a one-to-one -one correspondence, okay, correspondence or also a bijection if f is one-to-one -one, and on to B. So if basically F, is it at the same time an injection and a surjection? Okay, and we met today an example 
of bijection? Because we prove that, for instance, the function from R to R, which is defined by sending x in x cubed plus 1, this is, we prove that uh, is uh, an in, uh, uh, 1 to 1, and is also on to R. So because these two properties are true, we conclude that this is a bijection. Okay, so the uh, video ends here. I hope this was uh, uh, useful for learning about one-to-one -one function and onto functions. And thank you very much for your attention. And uh, uh, probably this is the last video of the semester at any way. Who knows that I'm going to do more videos later. Thank you and bye-bye.